everyone and welcome to my new video which if you haven't guessed already is a caroline Darzvadanya. caroline Coraline. i'm sure editing megan will do her best with that anyway if you haven't guessed already today is a coraline inspired video I'm very sorry for like the huge delay because I actually wanted to get this out by New Year. Clearly that went to plan. I had some editing software issues and you know I took a break over Christmas and whatnot and those combined just put the huge delay on this video and I got so so annoyed and whatnot so it just took way longer than I wanted it to take but you know it's here now. So I very much hope you all enjoy this video because I had to put so much extra work into it because of the software issues I was experiencing. Anyway, rant over. So now I'll just quickly go over my thinking behind my Coraline inspired designs so you can kind of understand and follow along with what I'm doing as I go through this video. So if you don't know, Coraline, before it was a film, it was a book by Neil Gaiman and that is where my inspiration came from. So it was the book over the film and yeah, the children's book is classed as a children's horror. I didn't even know that was like a subgenre of a book but apparently so and Neil Gaiman definitely did it right because the book is creepy as hell even more so than the film so yeah you should read it the book is about Coraline Jones a girl who moves into a new place and discovers a parallel world with the other mother aka the Beldam she must fight the Beldam to save her family and herself from getting trapped with the other mother forever because yeah, that's creepy as hell and the soul's in there. You definitely don't want to have buttons sewn into your eyes. Using the story as my inspiration, I decided I wanted to make an asymmetric corset. I wanted to reflect the different sides between the other world and the real world in Coraline. One Cup has a wave which I thought could like represent the transition into the other world and the other is a pointed cup which represents the bell dam. Can you guess why it represents the bell dam? Yeah, creepy. I continued with this theme with a wave and a point on the back too. I wanted to hand stitch wool on the corset so it separates it into sections and then I wanted to add buttons into different sections again, iterating the separation between the two worlds. The buttons are obviously direct inspiration from the fact that the other mother has a crazy obsession with wanting to sew buttons into Coraline's eyes to make her stay in her world with her. The idea of wanting to add some bright buttons in there was so it kind of seemed like the other world was all bright and beautiful which the other mother wanted to portray to like sort of draw Coraline in and make her want to stay but obviously that's not the case. On the other half of the corset I wanted to stitch black ribbon going off in kind of branches to sort of represent the creepy creepy trees and like the Beldam's creepy hands maybe. I just I think it gives a very cool vibe to the other half which is a lot less complicated than the wild button half. I think the quirky and dark design of my corset reflects Coraline very well and I hope you think that too. And with that, let's get started. So first I put my absolute sexiest bra on my mannequin, but I do this so I can tape over it ready to trace out the silhouette for the bodice that I want. I want a dramatic asymmetric design for my Coraline outfit, which I think I managed to achieve. I add cups to this design as well so it is more comfortable and I will be able to put boning underneath to support my bust bear as it will be quite a low cut corset. Now 
Then I move on to cutting the tape off my mannequin to get my basic shapes for the bodice. I press the tape onto paper ready to cut out of the fabric for my mock-up. I complete my mock-up off camera after this and do a couple of fittings to make sure it will fit me nicely. Now I can move on to the real fabric which is this deep purple satin which is backed with crepe material as well making it surprisingly thick and lovely to the touch. It's such good quality. I start by pinning my adapted paper pattern pieces onto the fabric making sure they are on the proper grain line. Then I cut them out. I always cut sections of fabric away to focus on individual pieces rather than trying to cut out a pattern piece without moving the whole sheet of fabric. Also, I remember to cut the notches too. these were all cut out I lined them up and started pinning all the body pieces together leaving the cups separate and pinning them together afterwards. This is so when I go to my sewing machine later on I can batch sew them in one go. But before that I also had to cut out my lining which I chose denim for that. I completed all the same steps for this as I had done before with the satin. I chose denim for my lining because it's what I had lying around and I have run out of cotille fabric which is what I would normally use. The denim is tight woven just like cotille so there's no issue and it's cheaper too. Next, it's sewing time. I sew the cups making sure to ease them together so they curve smoothly and I won't end up with a comical pointy bust cup later on. I sew straight down the satin panels ensuring that the notches still match up and I continue with the correct seam allowance. I repeat all these sewing steps with the denim as well. Here I am sewing the cups into the rest of the bodice but I didn't film me pinning them in place. I go slowly and ease them into the space on the bodice matching up the seams and notches as I go along. Next, I decided to connect these layers in a different way to what I have normally done before if you have watched my other videos. I pinned them right sides together down the centre back seams. Then I sew those seams together. Back at my sewing table I turn the satin and denim pieces right side out and there's a nice tidy edge at the centre back now so I won't have to bother binding those two edges later. I found it to be a very clever trick and it's nice and simple. I pin at the edge of the centre back seam so they are level with each other because I want to top stitch them in place so they stay nice and neat. Plus it's a line of stitching for the centre back boning to be put in later. I start pinning the top edges of the satin and denim together and lining up the seams to pin in place as well. I do this by feeling and looking underneath to try to match them up as best as possible. I pin all around the bust panels as well to make sure they stay together as well as lining up the undercups and pinning. There's just so much pinning. Next, 
I am back at my sewing machine and I start by top stitching down the centre back edges using my narrow foot to get as close as possible. I keep my narrow foot on so I can sew down next to the rest of my seams on both sides. These will be used for the boning channels later and they keep the satin and denim together of course. Next I sewed around the cups and repeated it again one centimetre away from the undercup edge for the channel. I went slowly to get the line as neat as possible. I sewed down the bust seam line which was difficult because of the shape so I had to go really slow. I marked 1.5 centimetres away from the centre back edge because this is going to have plastic coated flat steel boning in. Wow that was a mouthful. Then I marked 2 centimetres away from that because that's where my eyelets will be. I then took this over to my machine and sewed it where I had marked. I added another 1cm channel on the other side as more support for the eyelets. I sewed 1.5cm away from the seams for the centre front just like the centre back. Again, this is because I wanted to add the steel boning to these channels, so hopefully it flattens the front and stays straight. After this, I sewed 1cm away from the sewn seam edges, excluding the centre front seams, which will have just normal plastic boning in them. Next, I measure around the cups at minus 2cm from that measurement, accounting for the binding on each side and ease for the boning so it doesn't rub and wear down the fabric. Then, if you've watched my videos before, you know what comes next, preparing the plastic boning. But for those who don't know, I measure the boning, mark it and cut it using pliers. Then I sand and sand and sand some more for luck, losing my fingerprints as I go because I'm clumsy as hell. I do this so the edges of the boning are nice and smooth and won't cause tears in the fabric once inserted into the channels. Now the boning for the cups are in, I can bind the top edge. I cut the binding off camera and put it along the top edge of the bodice and sewed 5mm away. The first cup is the pointed one, so I decided to do a mitter edge. Is that how you say it? I turn at the end and sew off the edge and take it out from under the machine. I then fold over the binding and put it back under the machine and continue to sew along the edge as before. This will then be turned over and give me a nice neat point. I turn the bodice under the machine for the corners of the centre front and keep going. When I reached the curved cup I went very slowly and tried not to stretch the fabric too much as I went around. I lifted my foot up now and again to help go round the curves. By the way, if you do happen to do undercasing for cups on a costume, don't use boning, use bra wire. I'm just a lazy idiot who couldn't be bothered to order any and I had plenty of boning. I pretend that I'm being sustainable by using what I've got, but the truth is, I really am just that lazy. Now the top edge has been binded, I move on to prepping the boning for the bodice channels. I unrolled the boning which immediately sprang out everywhere which could have taken my eye out. Thank god for glasses. I measured and marked the plastic steel boning, then I had to use heavy duty pliers to cut this stuff. I ended up going off camera for the fear of it breaking my camera and I'm weak so I needed to call for reinforcements. Thank you mum, you are amazing. Once these pieces were cut, I cut duct tape off to use on the ends of the boning as a cushion against it stabbing a hole through my beautiful satin fabric. Lastly, I inserted it into the channel, then I repeated these steps for the rest of the centre front and back channels. The rest of the channels come next. I do exactly the same as I did for the cups. I measured the channels, I minus 2cm from that measurement, 
I measure the boning and mark it, I cut it with pliers, I sand the hell out of it, then I slot it into the channel. Next, I sewed the bottom edge of binding onto the bodice, which was definitely much easier than the top edge. I may have accidentally forgot to film me hand sewing all of the binding onto the back of the corset, but here's the result. If you want to see this process, you can watch my previous video, or there's many excellent tutorials for whip stitches and mitter corners on YouTube, probably better than mine. Now it was time to mark out the eyelets. I measured the space and marked the eyelets with equal spacing between them all. To make the eyelet holes, I first poke an awl through where I marked, then I used my embroidery scissors to widen it and after, my makeup brush to make it circular. The perfect size for an eyelet apparently. Then I used black embroidery floss to sew the eyelet. I sew just outside the hole and thread it through and keep going like that all the way around to saturate the hole and make it sturdy. After this, I pin the bodice onto my mannequin so I can use chalk to mark where I want my decoration to go. This side is for the blue wool I want to put on. I constantly refer to my sketch while drawing out my pattern. Then I turn to the other side and mark it where I want to place the black ribbon. Unfortunately, the next part was quite difficult to film because of the colours, but I moved on to hand sewing the wool to the bodice in place. I started at the top and sewed over that area a few times because I wanted it super secure. Then I went down with the wool, hand sewing and following the chalk line I had marked out. When my wool went out in branches, I simply knotted them together where the chalk lines met up and cut off the excess, then continued to sew the wool in place on the next branch. Here is the wool after being sewn on. By the way, the reason there are pieces of paper pinned to the bodice is so I know which sections have buttons and which don't because I'm that ditzy and no doubt I'd probably put the buttons in the wrong place in the next stage. Next, I started to sew the black ribbon to the other side of the bodice and again, the colours do not help the filming, but I sew tiny stitches so they can't even be seen on the ribbon but can still keep it in place. This is the result. Now it's button time. I got all of these buttons donated to me, mainly by my auntie Sally and my cousin Sammy, so thank you guys so much. I also bought myself assorted packs of pink, red and yellow buttons, just because those colours are nice and bright for my very dark design. I also got some huge black buttons for the project because they resemble the eyes from Coraline that the Beldam wants to sew into her. Super creepy. Oh, and I forgot I have some random buttons stashed away myself. So I got all my buttons and I decided to place two giant black buttons in each section that will contain the buttons if they fit. Then I sewed them in place going through the buttonholes in a crisscross twice. Here are the black buttons all sewn on. Next, I emptied the assorted red buttons and started to place them where I thought they would look good. I didn't want too many because I wanted them to stand out on the bodice but still have the design be plenty dark for the theme of Coraline. I didn't sew much of me sewing on the buttons because that would be super tedious so I'm just going to include photos of it after each stage. These are the red buttons sewn on. Now to organise the yellow buttons as I pleased. I think you should get my thought process by now right? 
the answer being that there really isn't any at all, but I found it fun to do. Here's the yellow button sewn on. Should I even say anything now? I think I'm pretty useless at this point. And here's the pink button sewn on. So now these buttons have been sewn on, it's time for the random buttons to be put anywhere in between. My tactic was to do it section by section and here are the pictures after each one. The first section. The second section. The third section. The last section and all the buttons are done. Thank God. Now the buttons are done, I mark with pins where I want the elastic to go to help me keep my chest in place when I'm wearing it. I simply hand sew this inside where the pins are. I lied, there are more buttons. I thought the black ribbon looked too bare and the buttons on the other side made everything not go together. So I decided to use smaller buttons in my collection to put near the ends of the ribbon so it almost looks like blossom or something. That way I think both sides tie in well with each other. Here are those buttons after being sewn on and I'm finished. I ended up sewing a matching purple satin pencil skirt for this outfit as voted for by people on Instagram. You can also follow me on Instagram, the link is in the description, if you want to see my work in progress pictures for the costumes I make rather than having to wait for a YouTube video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!